Today's video is going to be on this 1900 to 1910 Carlisle and Finch engine. This engine is only one quarter of a horsepower. Back in the day, they were just sold as a kit to be put together by the person that bought it. They were never sold as a complete engine that I know of. We've already had this engine running. I uploaded a couple shorts of it running. It runs pretty good. The only thing I'm really gonna do with it today is clean it up and we're not a big fan of this red paint that's on it. So I'm going to be taking this red paint off and seeing what's under it. I've done a couple test spots with some different things and it seems to come off pretty easy with a screwdriver. So I think I'm just gonna end up scraping most of it off. It should look a little better without the paint than with this paint. This paint's pretty bad shape at this point. Somebody probably Probably restored this thing back in the 90s or 80s so without any more delays I'm gonna get to tearing this engine down I want it apart so I can clean it easier and we'll get to see how it turns out all right so I got the thing all the way tore apart here it's in a big old pile of mess right now something I'm gonna show you guys on this is this has a piston trip igniter and a lot of engines don't have those and some people don't understand how they work they're fairly simple this one just has a screw coming out of the top of the piston on top of the cylinder you'll see that there's a rocker arm kind of sitting inside the combustion chamber and that is your actual movable igniter shaft and the piston comes up and lightly taps it and that's what opens your points contact which in this engine is on the valve chest which you can see actuating here and your stationary electrode just is bolted into your valve cage. It's quite a simple design and actually saves a lot of moving parts when making an igniter. But at the same time, on ones like this, where the piston trip is permanently attached into your cylinder, you have to take your whole head apart and everything to work on this igniter. And if you want to take your movable shaft out, it's a bigger process than if you just took your whole igniter out on a normal engine. So that's something you don't see very often on engines, is a piston trip igniter like that. They're pretty cool. A couple different brands used them. Several brands used them actually. They just aren't weren't very commonly used later in because they're just better options out there. And then spark plugs came out and made igniters irrelevant too. Now I got that out of the way. I'm gonna move on to cleaning some stuff. You guys have seen me wire wheel things before, so I'm not even gonna bother filming much of it. All right, so I got most of the other parts peeled off, the paint removed. There was some original paint on these rod caps, so that made me change my strategy a little bit. I wasn't sure if there was any original paint on this engine when I started this project. Now that I know that there is, I'm going to be a little bit more careful about what I'm doing. So I went along and tested with a couple different things to get the paint off, whether scraping, stripper, a couple different kinds of stripper at that, heat, and all those, to see what takes this paint off but not the original paint off. And after experimenting for that for a while, I found that using a torch to heat the paint up till it boils and gets all peely, it'll come off but leave the original underneath. So that's how I'm going to be getting this paint off of this without ruining the undercoat as much as possible. There's still going to be some original paint coming off, but that's what's going to happen. There ain't much you can do about it. And after all that, I went to stop recording and I found out I forgot to press record, so I didn't get any of that filmed yet. I have most of the other side of this block already stripped, but I'm not going to show that to you guys. We're going to start on this side. I did a little test spot on this side. There ain't near as much paint on this cylinder as there is on the base, but on the base there's a fair bit of paint by the looks of it, so it should be pretty cool. I'm going to get to heat it with the torch. You'll see it boil up, and then I'll just lightly peel it off with a chisel, and away we go. All right, so the camera isn't picking it up very good, but underneath this new paint, there's quite a bit of original paint here. I'm gonna go get some uh, penetrating oil to rub on it, see if it'll show on the camera a little better. But there's looking quite promising for this.
All right, so there you can see it a little bit. It's a really dark red. Now, some of you might think that's from me using the torch that's so dark, but I peeled some off earlier without the torch. It looked about the same. It actually is a really nice color in person. It's really deep red. Oh, well, there you go. If we get it down there, you guys can see it a little bit better. But yeah, all of this stuff is original paint still. So I'm gonna finish peeling this off. I'm just gonna cut to when I'm done. It's gonna be a bunch of the same. All right, so after about six or seven hours of scraping away with a razor blade here, this is what I ended up with. It took a lot of time, and on camera it doesn't look near as nice as it does in person, but this thing has a lot of paint left on it. This thing must have been a pretty nice red originally. You can kind of see the hue of it around there on the camera, not, not near as well as you can in person. And it's quite a bit darker with age and all the things it's been through, but this probably would have been a nice dark kind of maroon color originally. And it's just gotten darker since then. Now, the only thing I have left to do before I start reassembling this engine is I'm going to take some Scotch-Brite, some finer grit Scotch-Brite, and just scuff this paint a little bit because I haven't done a single thing to this paint yet to prep it and make it look nice. And I think if I take some Scotch-Brite to it and scuff it a little bit, it might lighten it up a little bit. I don't know if it comes up in the camera very well, but you can see a lot more of the red color in the flywheels than you can on like the base and stuff. So I'm going to do that to it real quick, and then I'm going to reassemble it, and we'll see how she runs still. All right, got it all back together, got it back on the cart. For today's video, I'm not going to mess with the water tank or the gas tank. I just have it on my little nurse tank here and on a coil sitting beside it. And the water, I'm not going to run it long enough to worry about getting hot, so I'm not going to even bother. But I'm going to see how well it starts up here after we mess with it. I ain't done anything to it except hook the coil up and get the spark ready and everything. So... Without much more, I guess we'll see if this thing fires up.
that's all I'm going to have time for in this video today. I'm not going to be able to get the water tank on it or the gas tank on it. That's something I'm going to have to do afterwards. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, I wouldn't think you would have made it this far. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this, I do a bunch of hit and miss engine and vintage engine related content on my channel. Go subscribe, please. I guess that's all I'm going to be able to do today. So, hope you enjoyed.